Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. And we have another Brand Ambassador joining us today, Wendy Chow. So are you into quilting? Well, she makes quilting really cool. So you're going to love this. So say hi. Say where you're from. It's great to see you. Sunny day in Michigan. I don't know where you are from, but be sure to let us know. And we are streaming on Brother's YouTube and Facebook pages on the sewing side. So I get we'll be able to see all your comments. And we are live. So we'll make sure we stop take questions. But in the meantime, let's bring Wendy up and see what she has been working on. Hey, Wendy, how are you? Good. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much nice. for having me. Great to see you. Oh, it looks sunny and beautiful there. Yes, it is nice and sunny in New York. Finally, it was really gloomy the last couple of days. So it's nice <laughs> to have some sun back again. So I saw like a huge, massive snowstorm go that way. Did you miss it or did you get hit? Uh, we missed it. Thank God. Very <laughs> I good. Hate the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So before we get started, actually, you were writing a book last time we were together. Did you finish yeah. it? Yeah, I think the last time we hung out here was October last year. And mm. yes, I have finally released my second book. I'm just going to give you a little Yay. zoom in. Let me um, see that. It's a home handball. Oh, I love the cover. Oh, that's okay. cool. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. So it is my second book. It's a little bit different compared with the first book where it focuses around creating quilted touches around your home. That's awesome. So, by the way, you all know it's not a brother product, but she's a brother brand ambassador. So be sure to pop over to her website later and check that out. In the meantime, you're going to show us a really cool technique. You wait till you see this pillow, guys. It's so cool. Yeah. So this is the cushion, quilted cushion, that I'm going to show you how to make. And That's it's really so quick and easy to make. And you won't believe it. It's actually made up of fabric scraps and batting scrap. Really? Yes, really. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> yeah, I had a quick question for our watchers today, our audience. So how many of you have a lot of trouble trying to use up your scraps, uh, your fabric scraps? Yeah, so that's pretty evident here. This is my scrap stash. So oh, goodness. I actually divided it up by color. Oops, that just fell down. So you can see that. Um, I've got another question for you guys. So, how many of you keep your batting scraps after you square up your project? Because I'm like, oh, it's pretty obvious that I got it. <laughs> And I do. I'm like, yes, I do. I don't know what to do with this stuff, but I have it. Yeah. Actually, today, I you don't have it on camera, but I actually have another big box of this just batting scraps. Wow. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But I, I, a lot of quilters, I'm sure they have the same problem. Um, but today, I'm going to show you a really fun method. It's a quilters you go method. Um, there's many different methods out there, but this particular method I'm going to show you, it utilizes the fabric scraps and the batting scraps that you've been keeping. And then once you kind of grasp the idea and this method, you can apply it to many different quilting projects. So, for example, um, the quilts on your bed, maybe on your couch, uh, maybe you can turn it into a table runner, or you can turn it into a, a really, really cute um, cushion cover, which I'm going to show you today. Sounds good, Wendy. Everybody, I'm reading everybody's comments. They're like, scraps galore. <laughs> and yes. everyone says, your scraps are the neatest. They love it. They're so nicely organized. And Arnell loves your shirt. Oh, why? Oh, why? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's going to keep it with the theme with the patchwork look. I love it. Yeah. But yes, I keep them into different colors just to make it easier to idea 
identify um, what sort of scraps I should use next, especially when one of the boxes fill up a lot and I can't close the lid. Um, that's where I start uh, digging into. Anyway, so I'm going to flip over to the other camera that's going to check out on my desk. All right, I got gotcha. you. There you go, Wendy. Right. So when this is the um, quilt as you go sort of project, so we're going to sew all these fabric uh, scraps onto the piece of batting and create this block here. Whoops, sorry. Here you go. Um, so when you are picking out your batting, ideally you want to um, pick batting that is the um, same loft and ideally the same brand. And when we talk about loft in uh, quilting batting, we're talking about different weights. Um, again, ideally you want to use um, a high loft uh, because the fibers are packed quite tightly. Um, so as you're sewing, um, the batting square doesn't really change too much, um, especially because you're sewing the fabric directly to the batting. Um, so as you're sewing, you find that this sort of warps a little bit. Oh, and the reason why I suggest uh, using the same brand or the same loft, it's just for the cons consistency. Um, so when you are cutting up your batting scraps, you want to have an extra inch, to so add an extra inch to the finished size. So right here you're looking here is a six inch square. And the, the finished size that I want it to, to be is five inches. So I'm going to add, that's why I'm going to add six inches. And when you're done sewing all your fabric scraps here, uh, you've got to trim it down to the um, unfinished size. So in this instance, if I want it to be a five inch square, I'm going to trim this down to a five and a half inch square. And that takes into account the quarter inch seam allowance on each side of the square when you piece all the blocks together. Okay, so that's um, that in terms of the batting. Um, and then when you, in terms of preparing for the fabric, you wanna have a bunch of strips already cut up and prepared for. Um, so for this particular project, I've cut up various strips, um, lengths of strips, uh, varying from five to 10 inches long. And you notice as well, I have different widths of fabric as well. So right here for this example, I've prepared one inch to one and a half inch uh, width strips here. And you notice as well on the shorter ends here, they're not perfectly cut up. And the reason being is because we're going to trim those off later. So this is what I've done before, kind of imagine. See how I've cut it all up, squared it all up, and it's all nice and straight. So it doesn't really matter about these shorter ends being perfect. And once you've kind of grasped this idea, you can explore and you know do different shapes, like this rectangle one that I've got prepared. Hopefully you can kind of see that. This is rectangle one. And if you're feeling extra creative, you could um, cut a circle and turn them into round coasters as well. All right, so I'm going to show you this first example. So I've prepared the batting scrap that I'm going to sew on, and I've cut out a whole bunch of strips. So I'm going to start in the middle. So I'm going to pick a long piece so this looks good and you want to pick a piece of fabric so that it covers up that area so the batting square 
If you want it to be pre pre precise, what you could do is draw a 45-degree angle mark going across, and then you can line that up. So I'm just going to use this fabric mark here and lay this piece on top. And then you want to make sure as well that the wrong side is touching the batting. All right, so I'm going to hop on over to my sewing machine. So if you don't mind switching back to uh, you, Angela, for the meantime, uh, while I move my um, camera. Perfect, perfect. So uh, by the way, that collection that you had there with all the different colors, Wendy, I love that. I could totally see that as a jacket. I would need a lot of scraps, but I love those colors Ooh. you picked in there. Yes, that would be really fun. You could turn that into a quilt jacket. Yeah, exactly. So do you have any questions for Wendy while she's setting up her sewing machine? Everybody's saying they love this. Oh, good morning, Cindy. <laughs> oh, um, any suggestion when you have batting in yours, Do you, when you just had those strips, do you have to have a certain size or can you still use scraps for that? Uh, you mean the batting scraps? Yeah. Um, it can be any size. So if you flip back over to the camera facing me, standing oh, up, I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is like a batting scrap that I've kept from squaring up my quilts. So there's like various sizes. And what I do is actually cut it to the size that I want it to be. And remember when you're preparing the batting scraps, do you wanna add an extra one inch to the finished size that you want? So for example, um, if you want the finished size of the square to be say four inches, you wanna cut a batting scrap that's five inch square. Um, that way, it takes into account, or you give that extra wiggle rule when it comes to squaring up your um, little block. Nice. That makes sense. It makes sense. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is this is why I keep the batting from squaring up my project. Um, that way, I can turn it into another project. So no waste, no batting scraps left behind. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, I'm going to switch over to my machine. So if you're wondering, this is the Brother BQ3100. It's the top of the line from the Quilt Club series, and it's the machine that I use pretty much all the time. All right. So we are ready to sew our first strip down. Um, and this first strip is actually pretty important because it's going to determine the placement of the other strips for the remainder of the block. So I'm going to sew this. And before I do, I need to thread the top, um, the top thread. And at this part, it's, you can be really creative and you can pick out some really cool colored um, threads. I'm going to use this neon Oh, sorry, I just realized I'm going to use this new neon one because it's one of my favorites and it really pops out and creates this really cool effect, especially when you are using decorative stitches. Right, so I'm going to thread this. And one of the great things about this machine is the automatic needle, um, sorry, thread up. <laughs> So I'm just going to press that button and there you go. My machine's thrown it up and I'm ready to go. So when you're sewing this strip, you want to make sure that you start just a little bit before the batting scrap. Oops, what am I doing? <laughs> Here we go. And let me lower the press of foot. And I'm going to just sort of eyeball the um, sort of straight line here. And I'm just going to use my presser foot here to kind of like and use a guide. So I'm just going to sew away. 
and then you cut that and then press foot up. So you can see that neon thread pop out, it's really cool. And if you want to, for the wider strips as well, you can add another quality line as well to hold it in place. All right, so we are done. And then move this so you can see. All right, so this is the first strip down, and we're now going to add an, uh, another strip to this. So I'm going to grab the pile of scraps that I have prepared, and I'm going to audition the next strip. So I'm going to pick one so you can see when I'm auditioning this, you want to make sure the strip of fabric covers up the batting, but also you want some overhang. That way, when it comes to squaring up your, your uh, block here, um, you're also, you're just capturing all that fabric. So when you squared it all up, see how there's no batting appearing there? And how you audition it is we know that this is too short simply because it's not covering up the bag. So I'm going to pick up another piece. Let's see, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick this one. This is a nice one. And when you are auditioning the strip, it's right sides together and make sure that this long edge, the two long edges are matched up. Then you're going to get your two fingers on each end here and probably about a quarter inch below that raw edge and then you're going to fold it over and you're going to pr pretend as uh, sorry why quarter inch below the raw edge is because you're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance from the raw edge here so two fingers here Fold it over, audition. So that looks pretty good to me. It's covering up the batting and it's a little bit of overhang there. So I'm going to take it back to the machine. I'm going to move this closer. Do we have any questions so far? Uh, not yet, Wendy. Everybody, Anne says, I've sewn like this before. This is so much fun. I agree. Oh, Kay has a quick question. It's a still yes. quarter inch seam allowance. And I think you just said yes on that. Yes, quarter inch seam allowance. And with the Brother BQ3100 machine, um, they've really thought out the needs of a quilter. So you can find the quarter inch seam allowance really easily. So right now, um, my needle position is in the middle, but in a touch of one button, it positions in it so it's a quarter inch from the, the right edge of this press of wood. And if you really needed to, you could do that on the opposite side as well. So my needle just moved so it's a quarter inch from the left edge of this press of wood. But I'm going to move it to the right. I'm going to bring this over. And if you want to, you can pin it, but I'm feeling pretty pretty confident, so I'm not going to pin it down. Um, so I'm going to lower the presser foot. And remember, you want to start just a little bit before the batting and then lower the needle and then start sewing. Side. So then now I'm going to fold it over and ta-da, you've done a strip. And then you can get an iron and press it down or you can just finger press it, which is what I'm going to do too. There you go. And then I'm going to sew another quilting line just to hold this in place. Um, I'm going to try a little bit, something a little bit different, and I'm going to use a decorative stitch on this part. And this is actually my 
one of my favorite decorative stitches that I discovered while playing around with this project. So I'm gonna tip this back to the machine. And remember, you wanna start just before the batting. So go. Noisy it's really not too bad that is that is turning out so cute so you're just using a zigzag stitch there right um i'm actually using a cover stitch but you can use oh. a zigzag stitch and gotcha. the rubber big q300 comes with more than 200 inbuilt decorative stitches machine and this project is really great um sort of project to do play around with different um, decorative stitches on the machine. So right now. Oh, now we can, can see, see it. it. Oh, that looks wonderful. So on that machine, yeah. Wendy, what, what is the stitch number on that machine? Yeah. So it's the overcast stitch. So if you go to the utility menu, utility stitch menu, sorry. Um, and it's one dash 21 and it's called the overcast stitch. And I changed the stitch width to seven millimeters, and then the length is at four. Great, thank you. Yeah. I know everybody, I know that question's coming out of the box any second, so I thought I better just ask you because that's like a big, a common thing. That stitch looks great on there. I love it. Yeah, and especially with the neon as well. So if you see, I played around with a lot of different decorative stitches. Oh and it my creates gosh. this really, really cool texture. I just went a little bit subtle on the um, quilting thread, but you could go side really bold like I did with this one. Gorgeous. All right, so I'll just show you the um, piecing one more um, strip, just as another example. Just show it one more time, just in case people are tuning in a little bit late. All right, let's see. Which one do I want? Let's, let's pick this one. So actually, no, I'll pick a printed fabric. Okay, so remember you want right sides together and then the long edges are aligned, All right? And then you're gonna put your two fingers on each end, because we're going to audition it. We're going to make sure that the fabric scrap covers the batting square, plus a little bit of overhang. So just a quarter inch below that raw edge, because we want a quarter inch um, seam. So we're going to sew that and then fold it over, audition it. And it's like, yep, that looks pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. And if you want to, you can pin it down and then take it to the machine and sew it. But actually before I move to the next step as well, another really fun thing about batting, uh, fabric scraps is that, for example, if you don't like this blue or it's too dark, you can flip it on the other side and use this side as the right side of the fabric. All right, so I'm gonna sew this down. I'm moving my machine closer. All right, um, so I'm gonna change to my quarter inch seam allowance. So again, this machine is awesome because I can click one button and it's a quarter inch seam allowance ready. So no second guesses. All right, so I'm gonna sew just a little bit before the batting square and sew away. And make sure that you end your stitch um, a little bit after the batting. You don't need to do any reverse stitches. All right, I'm going to move this over and then fold this over and then finger press. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use a different decorative st stitch here. 
see, I'm going to do the zigzag one and I'm going to adjust the stitch width just to cover it a bit more. And what I'm going to do is eyeball probably about this distance between the seam here and the press foot. There you go. Oops, hopefully you can see that. So I got its exact st stitch there. That is so cute. Yeah. So it's a great use of your fabric scraps as well as your bag scraps. All right. So now we imagine that I have covered this whole batting scrap here. So this is my example. Ta da. <laughs> And we're going to square this up. So I might actually um, flip my camera so you have an overhead sort of view of what I, my workspace. So okay. I'll give me two seconds. Sounds good. While you're, while you're flipping, I'll read some of the comments for you. Kay says, um, what she loves about quilting is fabric that doesn't normally go together. It, it looks awesome. It also shows off your skills and versatility. I agree, Kay. Super fun. And um, mm -hmm. was it Deborah? I was going through here, or Debbie, uh, had mentioned, I could totally see doing this on a big piece of fabric and turning it into a jacket. She said, am I crazy for that? I say, no, I think it would be fantastic. <laughs> I think it would make a great I, jacket. I agree. I, you're giving me ideas. <laughs> So everyone wants to know, did you make your shirt? I think your shirt is like stealing the show right now. No, I wish I could say yes, but it's actually from <laughs> Urban Outfitters. And it was on uh, sale. No, no affiliation of brother, but super, yeah. super cute. You could have totally made that though. <laughs> yeah, well actually on my next to-do list or want to make uh, for the summer is a plaid dress. Um, a patchwork one, similar to kind of like this, um, and using French seams to sort of hide the raw, um, the raw edges. So Super actually, cool. funny thing, um, I have tried to YouTube uh, French seams, and your video first came up. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it was good, and you learned okay with it. <laughs> no, it's it was really good explanation. And I'm definitely going to use that. And I'm sure many quilters are going to be interested in that, especially when they are wanting to create a, I guess, a patchwork garment, which mm -hmm. I noticed that it seems to be a pretty popular thing um, right now in the stores. So, yeah. Very cute. Well, I'm glad that I could help you out, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. All, All right. right. I got so you, you see my desk. Yes. All right, so now we're ready to square this up. And you can kind of see the seams going across this way. So it's 45 degree angle. And I'm going to use that as a guide uh, to square up. And I'm going to use the seam as, this, uh, as my guide. And I'm going to match it up with the 45 degree angle here. All right, I'm going to stand up to square this up. So I can apply more pressure. And before you square up, you want to make sure that it is within the five and a half inch square. Get my rotary cutter. And just be careful here. So you trim off the top and the right side. And remember how I mentioned the strips don't have to be perfectly cut, the shorter ends, uh, because you're getting rid of them and i'm going to flip it this way and measure five and a half inches so five and a half inches here five and a half inches here i'm going to line it up just a little bit better i'm happy with that and then you go ta-da and then when you're done with that then you sew these together so it's right sides together 
and then you sew quarter inch seam allowance from that. So it's similar to piecing um, foot blocks or rectangles or squares together for a quilt project. So I've prepared another sample. So I came prepared. So here oh, are- Look at those colors, Wendy. Oh yes. my gosh, I love this. Yeah, and I picked these colors because my blue and green scrap box was just out of control. I couldn't even close the lid. It was like a jack in the box when I opened it. <laughs> anyway, so I've sewed it together and then you press open. And the reason why you want to press open instead of press to one side is because of the bulk. You can see well, there's a lot of bulk there. Um, and the fun thing as well, when I've, so before you sew, you can play around with the orientation. So right now it's a square diamond-like pattern, or you can flip it around and make it into a chevron. All right, question for you guys. I'm gonna sew these together, but uh, Paul, um, should I sew it as a chevron or the other way? Oh. That's a good question. So everyone, leave your comments. One is chevron. chevron. What is the other? What do you call the other one? Just uh... diamond, I guess. Yeah, diamond. Chevron yeah. or diamond. <laughs> so while that's happening, I'm gonna move my camera. All right. While you're moving that, I'm, I'm watching all the comments. And so far, it's like half and half. Like half chevron, Ooh. half diamond. Um, oh, there we go. We even have the diamond icon. Kind of like the heart, but it's nice. the diamond. I like that. I don't know. I think it's like half and half. Although diamond seems to be pulling ahead. Uh, Kay wants All to right. know, I think it was Kay, where's your accent from? She loves your accent. <laughs> from Australia. There you go, Kay. Australia. We all need your accent. It's cool, Wendy. Oh, I thank you. All right, I am ready. So we're going to look at the camera here. The sewing machine. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, thank you. And remember, so it's right. We're going to. Are we going with the diamond? Yeah, everyone says diamond. I I think. All well, right. there's a few chevrons, but I'm going to have to say diamond is winning. A strong contender. All right, so we're gonna sew these together, right sides together. So I'm gonna flip this, so it's right sides together. And I'm gonna match the central seam. Yeah, and I'm gonna pin it in place. I hope I don't give people anxiety, but um, I sew over pins. <laughs> it's really bad. Oh, All right, goodness, so you're gonna place. have you you can't do that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. You're going to have like half half of the audience is going to be like, oh my gosh, and the other half. Like, How can you do that? that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to switch to a quarter inch seam allowance, and we're going to sew a quarter inch from this edge. All right, and I'm going to reverse stitch. And if you have a bunch of these as well, you can chain piece them. All right, I'll take it out. Take that thing out. Oh, the fire trucks are out. I, I, was, wondering the that, I was wondering what that noise was. I was like, oh. I know. I live near the fire station. And one of the really awesome features on the BQ31 drip is the automatic high adjuster. So essentially the pressure for pressure remains constant, uh, regardless of what type of fabrics or the thickness of the fabrics that you're going through. So you can kind of see those stitches. They're pretty nice and even. All right, so I've got, I'm going to press this open. So you've got this 
diamond style. I'll push this aside. And a pressing tip for this particular project, because it is pretty bulky, um, I like to use a bit of a flatter spray. So this is just going to flatten out the seams. All right, and then you're gonna press open. And when you're pressing, you're gonna wanna hold it down for a few seconds, especially for a bulky project like this. And I'm gonna just press it the other way as well. So see how it's all nice and flat. There you go. Oops. There you go. And then this is how it looks like on the other side. So it's really nice and flat. That's cute. Yeah. And then the cool thing about this technique is you've done all the hard work in terms of the quilting as well as the piecing. And then now we're going to baste the project. So normally when you're basting, you've got the three layers of a quilt sandwich. So you've got the quilt top, the batting, and um, the quilt back. But in this instance, um, we've all done that already. Um, whoops. We've, we've pieced and quilted the project to the batting, and we're just going to add one more layer to it. And imagine that I've spray basted this or can base it, whichever way you want to base it. And I'm going to quilt this up. Um, so I'm going to change my foot to the compact Move It Digital Dual Feed. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with it, um, what makes this really unique compared with traditional walking foots is the conveyor belt-like mechanism at the bottom. So it has constant contact of the fabric, and so it better guides the fabric, the fabric, and it's guiding the fabric on the top with the conveyor belt light mechanism, and then you get your feed dogs at the bottom. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to change that. I love this little um, kit here. I can't remember when, but I think it was like an IG Quilt Fest post, and someone stored snacks there. <laughs> what did they store they stored their snacks in the sewing machine? Yeah. <laughs> like I think it was like Skittles or like <laughs> Evidence or something. I mean I don't oh want to store Evidence in there just in case oh it gets a bit warm. Gosh. <laughs> and uh, of course just FYI M&Ms and Skittles are not a product of brother, but we kind of knew what you were talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So I plugged that in. All right. And then I'm ready to quilt. Um, so <laughs> notice <Liz. that. laughs> Wendy, this you know that tray that you just put in there? I, she, uh, Liz is like, no way the tray fits in there. I think people forget that that's where it goes. Like it's perfect. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Liz, I'm with you on that. And I have this little pipe cleaner, and then I just sort of clean my machine sometimes with that as well. And actually, another fun tip with batting scraps, they're great when it comes to cleaning out your machine because it picks up a lot of you know, that dust. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm ready to quilt. A really cool function on this machine it's the So Straight Laser Vision Guide. So I'm going to turn it on. Ta-da! Do you see that? That red light? So that's the So Straight Laser Vision Guide. One other thing you might have noticed is I have not um, marked any quilting guidelines. Um, it's because I'm going to use the So Straight Laser Vision Guide. So I'm going to move the laser guide uh, to the far left so you can see that move. And you can, of course, move it to the right as well if you want. Um, and then I'm going to change the needle position. I'm going to bump up my stitch length. So I'm going to put my stitch length to 
three. All right, and then I'm gonna use this laser guide to help determine where I'm going to stitch. So I'm gonna use this central seam as a jumping off point. Lower my needle. Truffle's hair is on this, I don't know why that's. <laughs> All right, um, hang on, I'm gonna start a little bit back. Go. So I'm going to focus on this laser guide, and make sure that it's lined up with the central scene here, and then start pointing away. And you can see that conveyor belt like Megan is uh, working as I am sewing. You go. Can you see this? So I've used the So Straight Laser Vision Guide, lined up with the central scene, and see how neat this line is. Wow. Relative to the central scene. So it saved a lot of time and effort in terms of quilting it up. So I'm going to flip it over this way and I'll show it one more time. So lower the press foot needle down and then line up the laser guide with the central seam Whoops. there you go Just hold up. there you go can you see that wow perfect huh? yeah Thank you to the so Straight Laser Vision Guide. All right, so I'm going to move over to my desk, um, overhead desk event. So um, I'm going to move the camera again. Gotcha. I'll, I got you covered. I'm sitting here reading the comments. I am absolutely loving this. And I, I agree. So Liz, by the way, you just mentioned using that tray in the luminaire i never even thought about that well my luminaire i have it level so there's no place to put the tray but if you have that compartment on there that's a great idea i think well i think all the machines have that little open although i think we need to leave a comment now are you going to use it for machine feet or are you going to use it for snacks that's going to be the question Ooh. that's the question of the day wendy <laughs> i like that can't wait to yeah. hear everyone's responses and Wendy, you'll have to go back and read the comments because uh, some people were saying hi to you that you just taught, I think, at QuiltCon or something. I did. I did that yeah. in a live demo. I think Rachel, it was Rachel that was in here that said, hey, say hi to Wendy. <laughs> Hello. Uh, All right. So yeah. far, Snacks, Snacks is winning. There's Rachel. There she is. Yep, it was her. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks for the win. All right. Snacks for the win. I love that. All right, I'm ready. You ready? Yep. All right, I've got you covered. Great. Take it away, so, Lindy. Thanks. So you've you've um, pulled it up your top bit, uh, pull, and then you can see this, you know, those guides or the lines that I've pulled it up. And I squared it up, got rid of all the um, excess backing. And now we're ready to assemble the cushion. So I'm going to, uh, when you're piecing this, you want to um, flip the quilt front so that the back is facing up. And then I've actually prepared two quilt rectangles. And this is going to be on the back of a quilt, um, the cushion. <laughs> and this is, we're going to create an envelope at the back. So I'm going to bring my example of back over. So essentially, this is, we're creating that envelope. So you can then um, put your pillow insert. All right, so I'm going to bring this back. So this is the front of the cushion. I'm going to flip it over so that the back is facing up. 
And then I'm going to introduce this rectangle that I've faulted up already. And the measurements are provided in the Brother Stitching Social blog post, if you're wondering. And actually, before I actually pin out, I have to show you how to do the trimming here to encase the raw edges there. So when you do that, I prepared a rectangle strip. Here we go. So you want to make sure that the rectangle strip is a little bit longer than the long side of this rectangle. And then you're going to fold it in half and then press it. So I'm going to grab my iron. Oh, actually, you know, I'm going to grab this wall pressing mat first and then iron it. And the width of this strip here is two inches. So quickly press it. And it's similar to binding a quilt, uh, machine binding, sorry. Um, so I'm going to move this out of the way so it doesn't confuse you. So I've got these um, quilted up rectangle. I'm going to flip it so the wrong side is facing up and then I'm going to take my binding strip, raw edges lined up with the raw edge or the long edge of the of the uh, quilt sandwich. And then after I'm going to turn around this way, and then I'm going to sew a quarter inch away from this raw edge. And then when we're done, we're going to fold it over and hold it in place. So then it encases this raw edge here. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to flip over to the other camera so you can see my sew. So not flip over to the other camera. I'm going to move my camera so you can see my sewing machine. All right. While you're moving, I'm... I can see it there. That's so, I, I agree. Someone just said, I never thought of quilting the back. I agree. I think that really makes it really cool, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> glad I'm giving you guys ideas. Lots of ideas. In fact, you have a few people here that are garment sewers that said it's projects like this that makes us want to quilt. I'm including myself in that comment, too. Nice. And it's so easy. And you it's nice because you don't really have to follow a pattern for this particular technique. Yeah, that's what's cool. Uh, move my camera. Oops, sorry. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, don't forget if you go to brotherssews.com or brotherusa.com, scroll to the bottom. And down there, you'll see the Stitching Social blog, and you'll also see the Crafting blog. Both of them are different. And we've got a ton of stuff. And so this is where Wendy's project is. All right. Thank you so much for switching the camera back. So now we are going to sew the binding strip to encase this raw edge here. So I'm going to uh, place the binding strip so it's a few inches before the quilt sandwich. And I'm going to line this raw edge up with this quarter inch mark on my machine and keep the stitch centralized. I mean, the needle position. All right. And then reverse stitch. And then let's go. I should have changed. I'm gonna quickly change to a large table. So one of the cool things about this machine is you can change this drawer thing. I'm sure there's a proper name for it. And <laughs> over to my table, my extension table. And I love the ability to switch over because I do everything on this one desk. 
So when I'm writing, sewing, cutting, everything. It's the time of living in New York. You don't have much luxury for space. All right. I think this should be better. All right. Take two. Okay. First stitch. I love that. I love that bigger table, Wendy. That looks so nice. And it's so it just makes it so much easier to sew when you have that extra space. Absolutely. I mean you can see it's night and day with the first take and this current take. It's funny, the camera's focusing on your hair. There we go. I'm sorry. Not the quilt, but now it's on the quilt. <laughs> Ricky enjoyed my hair for one second. <laughs> it looks great. There you go. So I have quilted this, not quilted, sewed this strip down. And it's a quarter inch from the raw edge here. And then you're gonna flip it over and then fold this over to encase that raw edge, see? And then you're gonna edge so there to hold it in place. Hopefully you don't see my hair this time around. <laughs> All right. And then when I'm sewing, I'm gonna use this right edge up here to line up the, that fold then. That's how I get that line. Hope you don't see my hair. Nope, just your hands this time. Great. Just going a little slower this time around. And then so you fold, hold it down, and so as you go. Nearly there. All right. Pop that. Press foot up. And then when you're done, if you notice this, these little tail ends. So we're going to use a pair of scissors, or you could use a rotary cutter and a ruler and trim it off. I'm going to use the scissors and cut and cut. So we have encased that raw edge there. All right, I'm going to flip over, uh, move my camera so then you have an overhead view of my desk. All right. Uh, yeah, Kate, that is a big table. I don't think you can order. I don't know. Check with your brother dealer if you can order that one to go on other machines. I know some of the machines you can order one and some you can't. So just double check. And Dolly, great to see you. I'm glad you made a live show. And was it Michelle? Yeah. So uh, we're not back every Thursday, but we had a special a special day today with Wendy for quilting. So happy to be here on a Thursday as well. Most of the live shows now are on Tuesday, though. So I'm glad you and didn't miss out. Oh, sorry. All right, you ready for it? Oh, nope, not quite yet. Nope, almost there. And did you know it's National Quilting Day on Saturday? No, I did not know that. Fun fact. <laughs> did you all know that? I usually keep up on that stuff too. I think last year, was it last year that we did a quilt challenge? And that was, we all tried to do something quilting using Brothers software. Cindy Hogan, another brother brand ambassador and educator had designed something for us. We all made something and I made a super cute skirt and um, I was so proud of myself, Wendy, but don't look at my points. They were not <laughs> very, uh, they were going to call them like, kind of like the outer space. They were definitely not real, <laughs> really pointy. I think I remember seeing that at Houston International Court Festival last year. Oh, yes. that example, right? I did. I did. Yeah, that was really cute. All right, so we're back at my desk here. And 
remember, so we got the cushion front. I'm going to flip it over. So the wrong side is facing up. And then we're going to pin these into place. So it's wrong sides touching each other. And then you pin that. And then make sure the trimming or the binded edge here is it's, it's, it's facing the middle or closer to the middle, I guess. And then when you add this second piece, you lay it on top and then you pin it. And it's okay if it's um, on top of this first rectangle, because it's kind of like an envelope and then you put your cushion insert there. So I'm gonna pin it. How am I doing for time, by the way? You're good, you got about four more minutes. Okay, cool. So when you're done pinning it, as you try, um, try to imagine it, so you pin this, and after that you sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the perimeter of this cushion. And then when you're done, you have all this raw edge here, and then you're going to create a binding strips. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So then you can encase that raw edge there. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Yeah, and all the details, um, or in terms of the measurements, they're all on the blog posts that I wrote um, on the Brother Stitching Social blog post. I think I'll see if I can bring that up here for them to see where the, I'll bring the website up. Wendy, this was so cute. What a great project. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm so glad I'm able to share this. All right, I was trying to find, I'll bring you back up here with them as well. I was yeah. trying to find uh, the link to the blog, but if you go to brotherso's.com, just scroll to the bottom, click on the Brother So's blog and it'll be on there. And if Brother Social Team is, uh, they're on here, I'm gonna have them leave a link uh, for that. So you can click on it. Cause a lot of people rolled in later and they're like, oh my gosh, the show's great. So if you're watching this on Facebook, share it to your page. That's the easiest way to find it again. And if you're catching us on YouTube, First off, subscribe to the channel. And second off, go back and binge watch anytime you want. But the thing with the live shows is when you come back to YouTube, look at the top, there's like a little uh, menu. It's not the first videos that show up, it's the next one where you click on live and then you'll get all of at your side virtually, which is fantastic. Wendy, this was such a cute project. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you. I hope it really inspires people to use up the scraps in their stash and the batting scraps. So I just want to know from everybody watching this, I'm pretty inspired to organize my scraps like that by color. Yours just looks so cute. And if you just have them batched like that, I have mine are just like a hodgepodge mess. So in a bin, of course, but I like the way you have those organized. Very cute. Yeah, no, it really helps determine what colors that you want to use for your next um, scrappy project. Scrappy project. That's the key word for the day. Everybody's saying love it. Very inspiring. Wendy, thank you so much. And don't forget, go visit Wendy's website. What's your website? It's the-weekendquilter.com. There you go. Catch her new book too, which is very cool. And be sure to stop by Brothers Sews, their blog and check out her, all the details for this project. And lastly, but definitely not least, don't forget to add hashtag brother sews or hashtag brother scan and cut. This would be, well, you're not really cutting scraps out, but if you had to, you could use the scan and cut to make them a little more, a lot of options here. And brother loves to see what you're working on. So Wendy, I cannot wait to see you again. This was fantastic. And I hope you have a fabulous day. Any last words you want to say to the whole brother fans here? Thank you so much for tuning It was a lot of fun. Super fun. All right. See you guys soon. See you next Tuesday, Bye. by the way. I cannot remember who's on off the top of my head, but Tuesday at noon, we'll see you then. Bye, Wendy. Bye. Thank you again.